All right, now I want to talk a little bit about fermentation, okay? The conversion of pyruvate to lactate and the conversion of pyruvate to ethanol. Those are two different fates that pyruvate can have. So, of course, pyruvate can go on to make acetyl-CoA, enter the citric acid cycle, all that sort of stuff. But it can also be used under and, and converted to lactate under anaerobic conditions, okay? When, ox when there's no oxygen, it can be converted to lactate, okay? or ethanol, but in our human bodies, lactate is the one we'd mostly be talking about. So anyway, the final reaction is the reduction of pyruvate to lactate. Okay, and I have a little drawing here of it. This is from the textbook. It says, you know, here's a pyruvate molecule and here's a lactate molecule. Okay, so we're converting it. The enzyme is called lactate dehydrogenase. You might not be able to see that. So I'm just gonna say it again, lactate dehydrogenase. And notice an interesting little fact here. Look here. NADH, okay, we got NADH plus H plus, and we're making NAD plus. Now that's interesting, right? I mean, where did we need NAD plus before? I don't know, let's see. Anyway, <laughs> the reaction is exergonic, meaning it gives off energy. It's, uh, you know, it has a large negative delta G. As you can see, I have the exact value. The delta G is negative 25.1 kilojoules per mole. And I think that's about negative six kcals per mole, if you prefer that. Um, and lactate is a dead end in muscle metabolism, okay? But it can be recycled in the liver to form pyruvate and even glucose by gluconeogenesis. And we'll be talking about gluconeogenesis shortly. All I wanna say is that Pyruvate might be, I mean pyruvate, excuse me, lactate might be useless, a dead end in the muscles, but it can be converted by the liver and even glucose. And think about what that's doing. That's shifting some of this demand, this energy demand from the muscles where the, where the, shifting some of the energy from, or shifting some of the reaction, you know, some of this energy if to excuse me, I just got a phone call. Anyway, it's shifting some of the um, stress from the um, muscle to the liver. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, and again, lactate dehydrogenase is the enzyme that catalyzes the reaction. And if this is a dead end, then why is it an important reaction? Okay, what makes what makes the conversion of pyruvate to lactate important? Well, what makes it important is that NADH produced from NAD plus by the earlier oxidation of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So here's where I said, oh, 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 I remember, where did we see NAD plus? Well, we remember we oxidized, we reduced NAD plus to NADH, okay? And there's no way of recycling that. So what this does is it allows for recycling of NADH to NADP plus, or NAD plus, rather. So it's used up, there's no net change in relative amounts of NADH and NAD plus in the cell, okay? So the regulation is needed under anaerobic conditions in the cell so that NAD plus will be present for future or further glycolysis to take place. So you need NAD plus. If, if, if there's no NAD plus and no way to make NAD plus, then you're gonna be in a bad position, okay? So you gotta find a way to do that. So without this regeneration, the oxidation reactions in anaerobic organisms would soon come to a halt because of a lack of NAD+. This buys some time for the organism to shift some of the load over to the liver, exactly what I said previously, okay? Now, I'll briefly move on to alcohol fermentation. Again, an important process, not so much in humans, but certainly one worth noting, okay? and. The other reaction related to the glyco glycolytic pathway leads to the production of ethanol, okay? And this is a two-part process, okay? This is one alternative fate also for pyruvate, as I said before. Um, and in the first of two reactions, which leads to the production of ethanol, pyruvate is decarboxylated. And what I mean by decarboxylated, in case you didn't know, is it's a loss of CO2. So that produces a molecule known as acetaldehyde. Okay, acetaldehyde. So first we make acetaldehyde from pyruvate. And the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is pyruvate decarboxylase, okay? And the enzyme requires Mg2 plus and the cofactor thymine pyrophosphate, TPP. Okay, I'm not gonna get into the details of why the enzyme um, you know, requires the, the, that cofactor, those particular cofactors, um, but 
it's just worth noting because I doubt that you're going to have to really at this level um, explain all the details about that part of it. So here's the reactions. First, you see a decarboxylation. Look, there's CO2, decarboxylation. What is left? Acetaldehyde. And remember, anytime you see this as acid at the front here, this when you see acid or form, you know, acid always means two carbons, okay? And look, one, two carbons. Perfectly logical. Now, I'd rather talk about it before I show the next part, but the reduction reactions in alcoholic fermentation is very similar to the reduction of pyruvate to lactate in the sense that it provides for recycling of NAD+. So look, here's another reaction that is providing for the recycling of NAD+. Okay? Again, we need that. We need NAD+, to continue going through further fermentation reactions. Okay? And that enzyme is known as alcohol dehydrogenase. That converts acetaldehyde to ethanol. Okay? And that's my second reaction in this drawing here. Here's the acetaldehyde, again two carbons, and look, here's ethanol. Remember, ethane means two carbons, again two carbons, and a hydroxyl group is ethanol, it's an alcohol, and NAD plus is regenerated. That's the important part. NADH is oxidized to NAD plus, and acetaldehyde is reduced to ethanol. Okay? So that's about all I want to talk about for this video and we'll be moving on to new stuff.